Hi friends, Nick here from Technology Lowdown. Today we're talking about a Raspberry Pi and how we can get this one set up as a digital TV tuner for your network. Now this video is inspired by some videos from CWNE88, another YouTuber here in Australia that did a uh, TV technology series on uh, how you can set up a multicast TV streamer within your network where you can stream your uh, TV tuner signal throughout your network using multicast technology. And his solution was great, but uh, I didn't want to go to the effort of <laughs> uh, buying many digital TV tuners when I just had one. I didn't want to invest all that extra into uh, buying extra digital TV tuners when I don't really watch that much TV anyway. So this was a project which was inspired because Basically, in our house here where I live, we remodeled our lounge room around and we moved the TV away from where the aerial port is on a wall that doesn't have it, which is fine for us because you, we use the Apple TV to watch all of our free-to-air TV, which is fine, but the only problem with free-to-air TV in Australia is quite often your sporting events aren't streamed across the net, uh, aren't streamed to say the 7 app on the TV or the 9 app because there's rights for other streaming providers such as Foxtel or even like say Optus Sport. So this poses a little bit of a problem especially when it's coming time to you know grand final time and you might want to actually watch one or two games. Not that I'm much of a sports fan but hey it's there as an option. So for this video you will need a uh, digital TV tuner a bit like this one here. This is a uh, Ava Media uh, Green HD um, TV tuner, which is one that I picked up from JB Hi-Fi about five years ago. But pretty much all the TV tuners that you find online on eBay, they have pretty similar technology um, in them, and they should all pretty much work. Now, if you get stuck trying to set up your TV tuner, I recommend uh, watching part three of uh, CWNE's uh, video here and uh, that will show you how you can install the firmware for a TV tuner if it's not going to work properly for you. So where we're starting today is basically with a freshly imaged SD card, you can see it here, root and uh, boot, and on here I've got an SSH file here so that as soon as I put this into the Raspberry Pi that I'm using, which is a Model 3B+, so it's uh, a pretty, uh, it's one that most tech enthusiasts should have laying around in their uh, tech supply somewhere. And uh, we're going to kick off with installing an application called TV Head End, which will basically allow us to cast it to our computers, to your phone, and you can even watch it externally to your network. Um, where this might be useful is if you're traveling. I know we're not doing any traveling at the moment because of all the restrictions on travel at the moment, but you could actually watch your own local TV channels on, say, an international TV, uh, on international holiday, by VPNing into your own network and then using TV Head End to watch your own local stations or your local sport. So that is always an option there. So I've just put that SD card into this Raspberry Pi and I'm going to uh, plug in this uh, TV tuner, just straight in, and I'll be right back. I'll just plug that into the TV signal in the lounge room and then I will come back. Okay, so I've plugged that Raspberry Pi in now and I'm ready to connect to it over SSH. I already know what the IP address is. I've checked my DHCP leases. Um, oh, that was the wrong password. Yeah. Raspberry, because we're still using the default one. Um, so, to get to this stage, you will want to make sure that you run uh, Raspberry uh, Config, which I'll let you run in your own time. Uh, so, we are just going to jump straight into sudo apt uh, get update, and then we'll do an upgrade. So, at this point in time, I've got the USB plugged in for the digital TV signal, and I've got the aerial plugged in. We're just uh, getting it set up with all the software that it needs. Um, I found I didn't have to expand the um, uh, SD card storage. I'm just using it as it is. I haven't even uh, given the graphics more memory using Raspberry Config either. Um, 
So let's just run through these upgrades and then we will install TV Headend. All right, so those commands have finished now. We're just going to uh, basically check on our adapter and make sure that that is all good to go. So let's do ls and then we'll go dev and then dvb. And it's just listing anything which is a digital TV tuner and looks like it's detected an adapter there. So that's good. If we look a bit deeper there with the message, um, we, will, we should see in here that we've uh, got a TV tuner here. All right, here we go. So USB Ava Media and as CWNE said in one of his videos earlier, uh, we just need to make sure that it is in a warm state and looks like it is in a warm state. So that is good to go. So a handy thing to do here, one of the things I picked up on before I installed TV head end, I found that um, in the region that we are here, where I am, that the TV, the signals which the TV tuner app seems to use on Linux didn't seem to have the correct frequencies. And that's because some of those frequencies changed around a little while ago and perhaps these repositories haven't caught up to it. So if I do sudo apt get and I'm going to install and then dvb apps. And this will just install some utilities that will allow us to uh, operate this TV tuner. Okay, so if I go cd into usr share and then dvb dvb legacy and then dvb t ls um, so in here if i go nano au um, and for my location which is townsville here you'll see i've got all these different frequencies here which the tv tuner will be using and this au townsville file is actually a file which is available in tv head end basically it'll have all of these files that we see here available on TV head end when we run through the setup process. So if I do nano au townsville here just to see what's in there, um, we'll actually see that the frequencies are different. So if I just make this one a bit smaller, we'll see that we've got um, a frequency here of 592500 and that one's there, so that's good, that's SBS, 550500, that one is not there, so what's that? So I'm just gonna put a little question mark there for a minute because that's wrong. And then we've got 599500, that one's good. Uh, so that's SBS so far in seven. And then 620, well, that doesn't exist either. So what's that one? And then we have 585. So it looks like we've got SBS seven and 10, but we don't actually have 578 or 571. So pretty much I went into here and I went 578 and uh, 571. And the reason I would recommend you do this is because otherwise you'll run your scan just to see if your TV tune is working properly and you'll find that uh, you won't pick up half the channels that you actually need. So I'm just gonna remove AU Townsville there for a minute. Just make sure I've got that on the clipboard. So I'm back in this file, I'm in it as sudo now, and I'm just going to write those changes to it so it's got the correct uh, information in there for the frequencies as I just showed you before. So now we've got the five correct frequencies there, let's just copy that one into our root directory, uh, into our home directory, and we'll just copy it straight to tilde. Now if we go back to um, our root directory up home directory, we'll see that we've got AU Towns over there. And now what we can do is a scan using the AU Townsville as the reference file, and we'll out that, output that to channels.txt. And what we can see here is it's uh, scanning uh, that list of frequencies that we had there, and it's picked up SBS, that's good. Now it's doing ABC, and uh, we should be moving on to the next network, seven, then we have Win. And SCA. Uh, so there are some errors which it seems to be showing here. Um, from what I, I find, it doesn't seem to affect anything with, with its functionality. It probably does mean something, but uh, a few errors shouldn't stop it from working. Originally, when I ran this before, I found that the frequencies weren't correct in the reference file, was 
that I just wasn't getting half the channels. And I just found them on a website when I was Googling around and I found it. I could have just went to ACMA probably to find the frequencies there, but um, it was just easier to find a different website. Okay, all right, so um, that basically tells us that the TV tune is working uh, in a roundabout way. Sure, we haven't actually seen what the vision looks like, but we know that the tuner should be working. So let's install TV Headend. It's uh, quite a simple package. It's in apt if we install uh, TV Headend here. It will install and function very well. All right, so it is a bit of a large package. It's about 100 meg there. So it will take a uh, few minutes to download. All right, so it's just come up to this prompt here for username, uh, put one in, I'm just going to use Pi and the standard one that I use on my network here. Do take note of the port, it is the same, but uh, you just need to remember 9981 is the port that it's on. So that's all right, now that should be creating that. All right, looks like we're good to go. Okay, so uh, select your language and your uh, language there for the program guide. Now we just need to save and next. Web interface is English, that's fine. Network, uh, this you will need to take note. Uh, my network is a bit higher than that, so I'm going to go dot O slash 23. And hey, I'm not fast, I'll let uh, O dot O dot O have a look at it as well. Um, I've got uh, VPN on here and I don't actually have the port open, so that's perfectly fine for my network. Um, and that's all I'll enable at the moment. So an administrative login, so do set one here. Let's use password and a user login, user and password. All right, save and next. All right, so IPTV, you can pretty much ignore this one. Do select something, but uh, we can see here network two. It's already detected that we've got a TV tuner here. We can see it here in the top left here as well. Um, and so I can just select it here, but that's our DBBT network device. If you had more, you could add other devices here as well, but I've only got the one. All right, so save and next. So this is where, um, how we uh, created that file. We modified that file for AU Townsville because what we need to do is copy that one in, especially for my case, if you're in a capital city, your file is probably up to date. But if you're not, then you will most likely need to copy that file that we just modified. That's right. So I need to go CD USR share and then TV head end and then data and then DVB scan. And if we go into DVBT, we will see that we've got all those files here again. So let's do sudo nano au. Townsville. Now it's just a plain text file. It's pretty easy to read, but we just need to update those frequencies again. So we've got ABC, which is we got five eight five five hundred. That one is fine for ten. We've got six two zero. So this one yeah, we need to change because this one should be. Five seven eight five hundred, and then we need to change uh, seven. I believe is fine, so that that's good. A B C needs to be five seven one. Just changing the frequency and S B S. That is five nine two five hundred, so that is good. Five seven one. What are we missing? Five seven eight. Five eight five. Five nine nine five hundred. All right, so they all look to be in there now. So I'll just save that one there. So now, if we go back to the web interface there, and we select our network type. All right, so here we need to select the AU Townsville file, which we just modified. Okay, there's the file there, and we can just leave that field blank for the IPTV. Now it's just doing a scan. And what we should see is a little bit of bandwidth here, and we might see some signal strength progress here as well. All right, so it's found 25 services, so it is getting there, that's good. All right, so that looks about right, 57 stations. So we can just go save and next. 
So pretty much what we want to do here is we want to go uh, create provided tags and network tags. Then we can just go uh, save and next and then finish. And what this should do is it should then update say this TV guide here. All right, so we need to go to configuration and then channel EPG and then channels and we need to go map all services. And what this will do is it will enable us to populate all, all the areas that we need to to be able to use this service well. So we'll map that. Now it does take a moment. All right, so that's done. If we go back to here, I might just give it a refresh. We should see it populate at some point here. All right, so I've just clicked around a little while there, and we can see that it's finally starting to populate some things here. Uh, the time zone here is 3.30 at the moment, and we can see that it's updated what's currently on. Uh, we've got the Nine network, um, and we can see that we've got a huge list of stuff here. Now, if you had a bigger card in your um, Raspberry Pi, you could actually make use of some of the functionality in here, such as being able to record a show. So this is a future one. You could just go record program. So I'm not going to go into that detail today because I'm not really wanting to use it for that purpose. Uh, I pretty much just wanted something that I could uh, view a little bit of uh, live TV as needed for, say, watching sport, as I mentioned at the beginning there. Um, so how does this work? Well, we can pretty much just uh, click on any of these ones that are showing here, play program, and this will open up in VLC. Can you put it in and there's that video playing. I won't play much of that because I'll uh, get flagged for copyright there. We'll close that one there. Um, now, another way of being able to navigate for these channels is we can go back to uh, configuration and it was under, I think, uh, what was it? Configuration channel. Yeah, here we are. So these are all the channels, right? So. Uh, say if we wanted to watch ABC News just here, we can just click on that one there and go open and then it'll open up in ABC. Now, I've only got the one TV tuner here, but what you can actually do here is because all these ABC channels are pretty much on the same frequency, I could actually open up, say, ABC Me at the same time as well. And that'll open and I'll just uh, go back to that other window. So there we go. You can see I've got uh, two streams running now from this Raspberry Pi. So I might just jump back to the terminal for my connection there. I'm just going to uh, install an app here. Just so you can see what it's actually doing. So ABC News, I don't believe that's HD, and ABC Me, that's not HD either. So, so let's start stringing ABC HD as well. So now we've got uh, three HD streams going here, and this is back on the Raspberry Pi. If I do bandwidth monitor NG, we can see that that's uh, pushing out uh, about 1400 kilobytes per second quite nicely, and I'm watching all those streams simultaneously without any problems. So that's good. What about how many resources that this Raspberry Pi is using? So HTOP, um, so memory utilization doesn't look too bad. It's about 150 of 92. Swap is pretty much negligible, so that's fine. And CPU usage, it's, it's humming along nicely. There's three streams. It's not significantly high, so you could probably actually um, uh, do a bit more with this Raspberry Pi. So in looking at this, you could probably run the Raspberry Pi quite happily with two TV tuners. And that way you could say, have someone else on this TV head end service, watching a different channel on a different frequency, utilizing the other TV tuner. Or you could be recording using that other TV tuner and then watching something else different with the other TV tuner. Well, I hope this video has been useful to you in learning how you can set up your Raspberry Pi as a network TV streaming device. So in a future video, I might show you how you can use your phone to connect to the service as well. Uh, if you've liked this video, please like it and uh, give it the thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, subscribe and tap the bell if you would like to receive notifications. Thanks for watching. Bye.